Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church and our online worship experience for this, the fourth Sunday after Easter on May 3rd, 2020. You are welcome here at this time at 10.30 a.m. on Sundays and 5.30 p.m. on Wednesdays for a live interactive worship experience. The services are pre-recorded for predictability purposes and to include as many different people as possible, but there's a live experience available at 10.30 on Sunday and 5.30 on Wednesday. But the videos are always available later online on both Facebook and YouTube. If you, are, if you have a YouTube account, please do subscribe to our channel. That's free of charge. Uh, and the more subscribers that we get, the more opportunities we have to spread the message of God's love in a variety of ways. Before we begin our service, let me offer our St. Mark's Parish prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. God of all, gracious and loving, we thank you for the diversity of your creation. Give us wisdom and strength to know your voice in the midst of the noise all around, so that we might see and serve you in one another and in our common life. Amen. We begin on page two of your bulletin, the inside front cover, and your bulletin is available either in the email that goes out on Sunday mornings or available in the comment section of this post. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ has entered not into a sanctuary made with hands, a copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. One note I should make before we continue, someone has let the dog out and he may make his way into the frame. <clears throat> we continue with the jubilati. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. <clears throat> We continue with the psalm of the day, Psalm 23, found on page 3 of the bulletin. Let us say it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Acts, offered by Max Zachary. A reading from the book of Acts. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the first reading is Canticle 20, Glory to God. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is a reading from the Gospel according to John, offered by our lector, James Baker. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Those who had been baptized. That's us. That's the church. This is early in the book of Acts, and Acts is the book just after the Gospels. This is the story of the early church. Church is what happens when we follow Jesus. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Those who had been baptized. That's us. That's the church. This is early in the book of Acts, and Acts is the book just after the Gospels. This is the story of the early church. People say all the time that Jesus did not come to start a religion, which is true but he did come to start a church. Church is what happens when we follow Jesus, even when we can't see Jesus right in front of us. The disciples who put down their nets on the shore, the multitude who got fed on the hillside, the people who witnessed the raising of Lazarus, they, they didn't join a church, they followed Jesus. But as soon, just as soon as Jesus ascended into heaven, they started a church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. That is church. These past six weeks, we have talked a lot about what church is. It's the people. It's not a building. Church can never be canceled. The work of the church continues. All of that is true. I mean, think about it. We face a global pandemic. 
unprecedented times of suffering and fear and worry. Of course the work of the church continues. The work of the church is to speak hope into the face of fear and to speak life into the face of death. The disciples had Jesus right in front of them. And then they didn't. Things changed. They got the Holy Spirit, but things changed. They had to decide. Do we go on without Jesus right in front of us, or do we go back to the way things used to be? They could never go back. They had met God. They had seen the face of God in the face of their friend and teacher. They could never go back. So they went forward. They figured out how to keep following Jesus even when he wasn't right there in front of them. The only way they could do that was by starting a church, by being a church. If you try to follow Jesus without other people around, eventually you'll just wind up following yourself. So we need other people. We need the church. We love our building. We like to gather there. We like our stained glass and our memories and our favorite pew. We love our church building, but we need our church. We need our people. The people who believe differently and still look like Jesus. The people who barely believe at all and still look like Jesus. The people who vote differently from us and still look like Jesus. We need our people. We need our church. Devoted to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. We, we are back to the early church, you and I. We are back to our houses, in our upper rooms, or at least our living rooms, or our backyards. We're back to figuring out how to do the work of the church in our own homes, from our cell phones and our smart TVs. We're back to reading a printout of the latest sermon, a little like sharing a letter from a traveling preacher named Paul. These are all the ways we have gathered in these last weeks computer and phone and TV and printing a sermon for those who don't like screens. And why have we gathered? What is the point? Because we are devoted to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. We are devoted, devoted to a life with God at the very center of it. There's another part of this reading that perhaps doesn't feel as familiar. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. I hate Greek word studies, but every now and then they help. The Greek word for together is better translated interconnected or inextricably linked. So that verse could read, all who believed were interconnected. All who believed were inextricably linked. When you read it that way, then the second half of the verse makes a little more sense. If you sat down and read the Bible from beginning to end, you could pretty easily come to the conclusion that it's about family. At every turn, God is urging people to grow their definition of who's in and who's out. The entire book of Jonah is one brilliant story about the fact that God's love extends to the whole world. The whole world, not just the people who live near the temple. 
Jesus, even if he were nothing else, Jesus is a prophet straight out of the Old Testament. Care for the orphan and the widow. Extend your notion of who is the family of God. Some of the most difficult sayings of Jesus revolve around family. He sometimes seems to tell us to reject our mothers and our fathers, our sisters and our brothers. But he turns right around after those words of rejection and he says this, whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. He leaves out father because God is his father because God is the father of all. We are inextricably linked. We are interconnected because God is our father. We are connected to the person who lives in our house. We are connected to the person down the street. We are connected to the person across the world because God is the father of all because we are all children of God. This crisis has taught us much. We have become aware of the things that matter most to us. What are we missing? What do we long for? What are we ready to let go of when things open back up? This crisis has taught us much. But perhaps more than anything, we have learned how connected we are. An illness that began across the world has, in a relatively short amount of time, enveloped the entire world. I know it doesn't seem like a short time, but it really hasn't been all that long since New Year's. We are connected. We are inextricably linked. We can no longer pretend otherwise. My health is connected to your health. My prosperity is connected to your prosperity. My life is connected to your life. All who believed were together. We are together. The truth is that we are together whether we believe it or not. There is a book, This is Water, by David Foster Wallace, first offered as a graduation speech at Kenyon College. In it, Mr. Wallace tells a story about fish swimming in the ocean. An older fish swims up to two younger fish, passing them, saying, How's the water, boys? The two younger fish swim on, one saying to the other, What in the world is water? We are in the water, whether we know it or not. We are together, interconnected, inextricably linked, whether we know it or not. Jesus says in our gospel reading today that he came for the life, that they may have life and have it abundantly. What if abundant life is the recognition that we are connected? What if abundant life is the acknowledgement that we all live downstream from each other? Abundant life is a life lived with God. God as Father, our Father, Father of all. Abundant life, at least according to Jesus, means strangers recognized as neighbors and enemies recognized as brothers and sisters. Abundant life, at least according to Jesus, means that we are together whether we know it or not. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
Our announcements for today are a couple. Um, we have our Bible study meeting on Tuesday mornings at 9.30, and just this past week we began probably a six or eight week study of the book of Isaiah, and so now is a great time to join in with that. Send me an email and I'll send you the Zoom information so that you can take part in those calls. Uh, it's 9.30 on Tuesday mornings, uh, and it lasts for about an hour each week. It's a great way to stay connected with members of the church that you may have missed over time uh, these last few weeks, and also to dive deep into God's Word and the way to tell that story in our own lives as well. If you have an interest in starting up a, a group, um, of, even of a few people or a lot of people, I can help you do that via Zoom, uh, uh, some kind of interest group, talk about a topic, or just um, to have a space to have conversation with folks that you're not able to see but wish you could at the church. One conversation that took place this past week on Friday was one facilitated by Susan Marshall, our member who is also uh, the founder of the Center for Mindful Exploration. Um, St. Mark's partnered with her and First Methodist uh, to facilitate a conversation on mental health in, uh, during the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. That conversation took place at noon on Friday but was recorded and is or will be available online on the St. Mark's Facebook page and YouTube channel uh, to view and to take part in uh, so that you can find out some strategies for, um, for coping and for maintaining your mental and emotional health throughout this crisis. Uh, please do take advantage of those kind of opportunities. Please reach out to a friend or neighbor. Reach out to me if you're feeling lonely or feeling left out. Um, I don't want anyone to feel isolated during this time and there's no way that I can possibly reach out to everyone in the time frame that they need to. We have a great pastoral care committee um, that is committed to the work of keeping folks connected. And so all it takes is one phone call or email and you can get the time and the care that you need and that you deserve. So please do take advantage of those opportunities as you need to. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. continue our service with the prayers. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, creator of all that is good and gracious and true, we give you thanks that we are able to offer out of the abundance that you provide. Bless our offerings to the glory of your name that is love and faithfulness through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon all earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our service continues with the colics and the prayers. We are joined this morning by a special guest who will offer those colics and prayers on behalf of St. Mark's Church. Good morning, everyone. Bishop Wright here. Thank you to your Rector Allen for inviting me to join in with your virtual worship experience. And before I offer the prayers assigned for today, let me just say to you personally how much I am proud of the Diocese of Atlanta. That includes you on the ways in which we're taking care of ourselves and taking care of our neighbor. You know, we find the real meaning and depth of our words of faith in times just like this. And so even though there's been loss and death and fear and sickness, we are simultaneously finding out the depth and meaning of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are finding out what it means to be neighborly and to extend partnership to an ever increasing widening circle. And we're doing this because we're included in this robust sense of God's love. That's the measure of the gospel. And so St. Mark's keep on living it out. Keep on doing it in big and small ways. And as the queen said just the other day, we shall meet again. So until then, let us pray. O God, whose son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your son, our Savior. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, in you we live, move, and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I ask your prayers for all members of God's holy church, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, for Alan, your rector, for all who minister in Christ's name. We pray for St. Mark's Kindergarten, Kim Davison, director, and all the students, teachers, assistants, parents, and board members. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Donald, our president, and Brian, our governor, and Jim, your mayor, and our county commissioners and city councilors. We pray for all those working to relieve the suffering, the fear, the anxiety, and the pain caused by this pandemic. We pray for healthcare workers, for cashiers, for restaurant workers and others, and those we name silently or aloud. We pray for all those who have suffered loss or grief during this pandemic. We pray for those who have lost a loved one, for those who are isolated, for those who are working and struggling, especially business owners, to stay afloat. We're praying for those now we want to name silently or aloud. We pray for those in the parish of St. Mark's, especially Beverly and Elaine and Bud and Kathy and Martha and Owen and Ann and Charles, for Sue, for Lee, for Marshall, for Annie, for Marshall the Third, for Larry, Abby, Carolyn, Jan, and Adrian, and all others we name silently or aloud. We pray also for those who have died, 
especially those we name now, silently or aloud. And we pray for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, for Rocky and for Fred. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you and all the members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, St. Mark's. God bless you, Alan. Keep up the good work. Be encouraged. Thank you to our bishop and my friend, Rob Wright. We continue with a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good morning and blessings. older fish swims up to two younger fish, passing them, saying, How's the water, boys? The two younger fish swim on, one saying to the other, 